This video is brought to you by Setup. Welcome to part 3 of my desk setup guide series where we explore all the essentials and inessentials necessary for achieving the most suitable, productive and inspiring desk setup. In part 3, we talk about apps and tools that help you take full advantage of your desk setup. Be sure to watch the other parts of the series like desk setup necessities and peripherals at the end of this video or in the description below where I'll be placing and updating my recommendation links as time passes. Warming up with built-in features of the Apple ecosystem. Universal control is now a default one on all the latest Apple devices that surprisingly few people know about. With it, you can control multiple Apple devices all with a single keyboard and mouse. In most cases, I keep the tablet nested in my desk shelf, which if you're interested, you can check out in the first episode of the guide series, which I'll link at the end of this video. So while the tablet is there, I can simply move my Mac mouse down to resume control of the tablet seamlessly. Once the mouse cursor is within the tablet screen, my Mac keyboard also becomes an input device for the tablet. And once I move it up to the Mac monitor screen again, I am back to controlling the Mac with the same peripherals. With the help of universal control, I can easily use two operating systems as if they are one. I can control my music and take care of instant messages and email on the tablet while the Mac remains the main video editing workflow machine, for example. This integration requires no initial setup, by the way. If your devices are next to each other, all you have to do is move from one to the other and the connection is established. Another option to establish this connection is to go to control center and click on the display icon right next to the brightness level. If you want to tweak the position of the tablet relative to the monitor of your Mac, you can go to system preferences and display to relocate them accordingly. While there, another option that is worth exploring is Sidecar. Sidecar turns your iPad into an additional Mac monitor, creating an iPad stacked setup, something I discuss in my dual monitor setup guide, which I'll also link below. Using your iPad as a secondary display can be very useful for apps and workflows that can take advantage of it. For me, for example, the iPad becomes my video library manager while editing, leaving more space on the primary display for the viewer and coloring tools in the timeline, of course. Sidecar displays the iPad as any other secondary monitor, allowing you to move it around and position it to your liking. Both Sidecar and Universal Control are built-in Apple features, which if you haven't, you should definitely try. While on the same topic, Universal Clipboard and AirDrop have become the gold standard. I use Universal Clipboard all the time, especially when posting things on Instagram. In most cases, I'll generate my text and hashtags on the Mac and I'll simply paste them on the iPhone or the iPad. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Closing the topic of built-in Mac features, one you should enable if you haven't is Accessibility Zoom from your Mac system settings. You can go to Accessibility and Zoom and turn it on from there. When enabled, you can hold control and use the mouse scroll to zoom in and out anywhere the cursor is. Again, I use it all the time, especially when I deal with multiple displays and it comes in very handy when dealing with minuscule items or text elements and very often when my eyes get tired. This feature works great no matter how many displays you have connected, including the iPad. It also works while in meetings if you want to emphasize on something. Now let's talk about apps. Magnet is my go-to window snapping tool on the Mac. Unlike Windows, Macs can get a bit more messy when it comes to window management and this is where the app Magnet comes into play. It is a paid app, yet keep in mind that there are free alternatives to it like Rectangle. Magnet brings snapping to each Mac window once you stick it to the edge of the screen to allow for quick and symmetrical arrangement. Aside from hitting the display edges, you can use, of course, shortcuts to achieve the same results. If you have a 16 by nine monitor, the most used snaps are usually side by side or two smaller windows and one tall one. But if you have an ultra wide monitor, you can even go further in the organization levels. Although you can achieve similar results with the max built-in split screen option, snapping is much easier and more flexible. If you decide to throw in additional desktops in the mix, you can have some really organized and productive layouts. Talking about organization, a little app that I recently discovered is called Mission Control Plus. As you probably know, Mission Control gives you a glimpse of all your active windows on a desktop, but it's lacking one important feature. Mission Control Plus provides the missing close icon to help you quickly get rid of windows and apps that you're currently not in need of. You can use shortcuts to close, minimize, and even quit apps right from Mission Control. 
Very useful indeed. By the way, I've placed a hot corner on my screen to activate mission control by hitting the top right corner of the display. My top left corner opens the app drawer. An essential app for any setup should enable you to also keep your finger on the pulse of world news. Curio is an app like no other. It provides curated news, but not by AI. A team of editors browses dozens of world's top publications daily and handpick the best articles. Furthermore, professionals narrate the articles to turn them into high quality audio. We're talking about 50 plus world leading publications and over 10,000 handpicked audio articles you can enjoy on your desk setup, iPad, iPhone, Apple Watch, and even CarPlay. You can enjoy geopolitics, science, social media, and much more while commuting, exercising, or cooking. You can try Curio on setup alongside another 240 premium productivity-focused apps and tools in one suit. Whether reading the news, coding, cleaning, or fixing, the setup search bar will find the right app for you. You'll also get access to any app updates or new additions, so head over to the first link in the description below to try setup for free for 14 days. Since we're on the topic of desk setups, unless you're using the Apple Studio display, you might be having issues controlling the brightness or volume on third-party monitors. Instead of torturing yourself using the monitor on-screen controls, you can download a very simple yet very powerful app called Monitor Control. With it, you can start utilizing the brightness controls on the keyboard to actually control the brightness of the display that you're using. Same goes for the volume control. If the monitor has built-in speakers or you have connected a speaker system on the back of the monitor, you can use the keyboard shortcuts to control them thanks to this little app. Now keep in mind that not all monitors are supported, especially when it comes to the volume control, but reporting on my side, in terms of brightness control, it's a must-have app. While on the topic of brightness, another app that I really like is called Vivid. The app takes advantage of the built-in XDR displays of the MacBook Pro and the XDR monitor to allow max brightness on demand and not just when consuming XDR content. The app has been rebuilt from the ground up for version 2 to work extremely efficiently and comes in handy if I'm to work in a brighter environment. Now, even if you don't have an XDR monitor like me, Vivid still comes in handy because it has a new feature called Eclipse Mode, which essentially brings the brightness level lower than the minimum. I use it more for instant dimming of my display when needed. Next up is AirBuddy. This app brings the iPhone and iPad AirPods pop-up screen and animation to the Mac. Whenever I activate my AirPods, I'm presented with the beautiful animation of my AirPods, allowing me to glance at the charge of both the buds and the case, while also giving me the choice to connect to them. AirBuddy can be styled to look differently depending on your likings. While AirBuddy can give me information about the battery levels of my AirPods, Cloud Battery can keep me up to date on the charging status of all my devices. From the Magic Mouse to the Apple Pencil, I can glance and check the charge level on everything that has cloud battery installed on it or connected to it. I find this an invaluable tool, especially when it comes to my peripherals, since with it, I can avoid being stranded in the middle of a writing session or a project. All right, let's review some simple yet useful tiny apps that are worth investing into. Hazeover is an app that puts a dark overlay on all your inactive windows and desktops, allowing you to focus on the task at hand. If you have plenty of windows open and you notice that you need to clear up your mind, you might find great use of this refocusing approach. Quick View Calendar is the simplest task menu calendar that I always refer to without having to open up my calendar app. Bartender is the app that keeps my menu bar neat and tidy, hiding all the menu apps and tools that I don't necessarily need all the time, leaving only those that I want to focus on and most often use. Copy Clip is my Mac clipboard manager that is an absolute lifesaver. Whatever I copy, especially when it comes to text, Copy Clip keeps it in place for future reference. Amphetamine is the little app that keeps my Mac awake, not even allowing the screensaver to run. I use this app when I want to leave the Mac running while doing a recording like right now or when I want to leave it to my colleague to finish a project I started. Color Picker is the tool that helps me grab all sorts of colors no matter what's on the screen. I can use it to sample any shade and even add it to my system color palette ready to be used in a thumbnail or a video project. If you enjoyed this video, check out the previously released Desk Setup Necessities Guide or Peripherals episode where we talk about mice, keyboards and more. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.